Hello lovely people, how are you doing today? I hope you're well. I'm just having a quick breather outside the shed. I'm pooped. Oh, <laughs> scratched my nose with a muddy finger. Yeah, I'm pooped. It never fails to amaze me how time consuming and <laughs> exhausting it is planting plants. Oh my goodness, but, oh, the relief. I've just planted, well, just over the last, what's the time now? Oh my goodness, it's half three. So in the last three hours or so, I've planted a little over 50 brassicas. I'll show you everything in a second. I just need to sit down for a minute. Um, I've planted my purple sprouting broccoli and I'm delighted that I've got eight spare because one of my friends that way, uh, his were completely eaten way earlier in the season by the slugs. So, purple sprouting broccoli in, calabrese in, savoy cabbages in. The uh, calabrese and the savoy cabbages had had quite a few nibbles whilst they were in the cold frame. I guess because I had the side windows open. Never mind. The purple sprouting broccoli, less nibbles. Quite a lot of them, look, I'll show you one of the spares of the purple sprouting. I mean, they look a bit pathetic, don't they? In all honesty, they're a bit leggy. I mean, <laughs> I've been saying this all year, haven't I? They're about four weeks late going in. We're right at the very end of August. You might not see this till the beginning of September, but normally I would have had my new potatoes out by the end of July, pop the purple sprouting broccoli in. I would have had my onions out by the end of July, pop the calabrese and the savoy in. It didn't happen. Am I gonna throw these away? No, they've got a chance. So all I've done today in planting them, I've planted them much deeper. I've planted them pretty much up to that sort of first leaf. That's great, it'll give them a really good anchor. They hate wind rock. Really firm them in. All of us gardeners, one thing we always talk about with brassicas is get them really, really well firmed in. So at the moment, they're all little teeny tiny babies like this. They've got nets on. Uh, shallow-ish nets as they grow once they're about so at the moment out of the ground there's maybe four or five inches showing once they're up to about a foot maybe a little more that's when I'll come along and I'll put the big sturdy stakes in next to all of them a to stop that wind rock but B to stop them growing sideways and going all over the paths keep them nice and upright and then it's easier for harvesting as well because the harvesting is at the top rather than scrabbling around down on the soil. So, I'm really delighted they're all in now, better late than never. Honestly, it's exhausted me. In fairness, the two onion beds were rock hard. So even to make a little planting hole with my, have I brought my knife back to the shed? My hori hori knife was a bit of an effort but they're in and they've all had a really, really, really good soak in too. Where they've been sat in their pots. I should have said actually, first thing this morning when I came down, I watered them all, really, really, really soaked them. Um, they were sitting in the trays with the water, let that soak up. And then I was making that video when I was chatting about the seeds and seed saving. So they've had a good soak plant them another really really good soak in terms of the bed prep I haven't really done much um, scattered some chicken manure pellets on the top gave all a really good watering it helps to just start to break down those chicken pellets and they can start to release their goodness get the plants planted get them watered I've done a sprinkle of what they're called slug pellets across all the beds <sighs> they're organic slug pellets I'd rather not use them at all however I'm not losing more food to slugs this year I am just 
not having it. So they've had a bit of a sprinkle on one bed. Ah, in the purple sprouting. Oh, I haven't got them here, up here to show you. The little canister, it's like a cardboard tube. You know, like you get your tennis balls in, it's kind of like that. And on the top, there's a lid that twists and there's, there's different openings. There's a closed opening, doesn't make sense. There's one that's for sprinkling and one that's for pouring. I had it open at the pouring setting. I don't know why, I never pour them. So I went like that to sprinkle everywhere. Not to worry. I mean, it's not too heavy and we don't have any hedgehogs here. Unfortunately, I'd love some. So, that's that's them done. And like I say, I mean, it's a, it's a great relief because, you know, getting plants in, brilliant. It's winter food, brilliant. Fresh stuff all through the winter and then the purple sprouting broccoli next spring. Yum, yum, yum. Fab. I think more than anything though, it's a relief because it's sort of, it's almost a symbol to myself that I'm back in the garden. <laughs> I still don't have a huge amount of time for the garden, but I do feel like, yeah, I'm back. And as I've been doing it, because it's quite a repetitive process, and I've been backwards and forwards with sort of the seed, tra the plant trays, and backwards and forwards to the shed, and just sort of looking around the garden, it is quite overwhelming, the amount of work that needs doing. When I get like this, when I get to feeling overwhelmed, I have to almost put blinkers on and just say to myself, you are just doing this one job. Forget everything else. Forget it. Just forget everything. My one job today was to rescue those brassicas. It's like the second rescue they've had this year, isn't it? I rescued them back in the spring when they were all little teeny tiny seedlings. They're on the deck, they'd come up beautifully and then pff, overnight the majority were massacred. So I rescued what I could and now I'm rescuing them again by getting them into the soil so they can wiggle their toes around. So yeah, today's focus is brassicas, brassicas, brassicas. We'll go up in a minute. I need to lift the nets on the cavolos to raise it up. And that'll give me a chance to have a bit of an inspection, how they're doing, maybe sort out if there's big weeds underneath. Oh, let's go to, we'll go to the cold frame first. There's something I want to do at the cold frame. But yeah, having, having achieved what I wanted to do today in terms of plant the brassicas, I'll do the other bits with nets in a minute. I'm really pooped and I am shocked to see that it's actually, it's not half three, it's quarter to four. Right now, I want to go home. <laughs> I just want to go home. I've had enough now. I mean, I, I'm loving it, but I mean, for my knees. But I'm going to see if I can persuade myself to just stay on for maybe another half an hour to an hour and do a bit of strimming. Now, I know I talked about this a few days ago, about, you know, the grass, the strimming, the trimming, the weeds, they are not a priority at the moment, and they're not. However, one, the grass is getting so long and snarly, it's tripping me up. It doesn't take much to trip me up, but it's tripping me up. But also, it's really, really distracting me. I know that sounds silly to a lot of people, but it's just bothering me and distracting me and I think that distraction is it's almost stopping me from being able to move forward I've moved forward today with the brassicas but what's the next job I can't think because of this darned grass so I'm not going to use up my beginning of the day garden energy on it I'm not going to come down here and spend a day doing it specially but on a day like today, when I can get one of my very specific priority jobs done, if I can sneak a bit of energy, sounds like a biplane. Yeah, if I can sneak a little bit of energy at the end of the day, even if I do one path, it's a move in the right direction and it will just help calm that down. So I think let's go off to the cold frame because I've emptied it now. So, <laughs> I want to take the shade netting off and see see what's going on with this, the the um, butternut squash that are rampant on it. I don't even know how I'm going to get into that space, but let's go and have a look, a try, 
see what we can do, see if we can, I'm thinking about getting it to come into the cold frame, nice and warm, let's see. Oh my goodness, it's such a tangled mess. Actually, while I'm here, first things first, I'm just gonna have out that self-seeded borage. I don't want that to be self-seeding in there next year because I need space for plants. Oh, lob it there. So, oh my word. I'm just gonna tease it out of the way a little bit because Right, the net is held down by bricks. Oh, I'll just lob it in there for now. Oh, blah. Okay. Oh my goodness, the grass is so long here. Sorry, I realised you didn't hear a word of that, did you? I just said the grass is so long. Right. Now, I think... I'm just going to... Oh no, there's another one there. What's that one? I'll leave the window open there. You can't quite see it. There's one right down here. That can go in there. And then... Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness. I think I might have to move you and show you what I'm trying to do. Anyway, I'm just going to get these windows shut. They don't need to be open anymore. But, okay, this bottom, this bottom side window is open, and then, yes, yes, little plant. Oh, it's two plants. Well, you can both... Okay, they can both go that way. Now, oopla. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you saw any of that. There's kind of nowhere to put feet or camera at the moment. I think I need to extricate me and you uh, and show you from a different angle. Just let me get out of here. <laughs> right, well, I'm standing in what's supposed to be a path. <laughs> uh, you can see that's the edge of a bed. And I just realised, coming back towards the cold frame. Oh, noisy planes. So those two, that end that are going through, they are butternut squash. But this one that's romping away, do you remember I spotted it was one of the self-seeded cukes? Oh, in fact, there's a fruit to pick. Yeah, this was the cucumber bed last year. And a couple, or one, I can see where it starts actually. There it is. One of them self-seeded. It's going for a walk off through the lavender into the cold frame. And then there's another piece coming this way. So yeah, I'm glad I left that. Brilliant. Oh, do long de long peppers. Well, we'll have a look at all of this properly when I get to the September tour, which isn't far away. But look, butternut. Can you see just through there? That's the rouge vif. Through there is a very pale one. That's also rouge. And I just spotted. Can you see through there? That's another rouge vif de tomp. But then orange. I mean, look at this jungle. It is a jungle. And the other thing that I'm really, really, really happy with is a look at this. This mass. This is the Coco de Pampol. Oh, look, with a cucumber coming out of the top. What I haven't done is, oh yeah, look. I see lots of little beans forming. Yay. 
I'm so glad I did that repeat backup sewing really, really, really late, four weeks late, like everything, but at least it looks like I'll have a, a harvest of some sort. Right, let's turn our attention back to brassicas. I was mentioning when I raised the nets on this the other day that I do need to give it a bit more attention. See the nets coming away a bit there. Uh, ideally, what I'll do is I'll get it completely off, weed under there, add some more mulch if I can find some to make some, uh, see if I can just get the nets a little bit higher and tuck it all back in until the cabbage whites have disappeared. But in the meantime, let's go and have a look at the other, uh, yeah, the Cavallo Nero. Okay, so the Cavallo Nero, but look what I just spotted on my way <laughs> to come over here. <laughs> Are you having a nice little chill down there, buddy? So you can see, again, look, they're squished right to the top. Okay, in fact, <laughs> they've lifted the nets. So what I'll do, get this off, raise up the hoops. So where the, at the moment where they're crossing over, uncross them, bring them so, so they're sort of, you know, parallel. That will raise them up, get the nets back on. Also, do some weeding under there if necessary and there are a couple of really quite rampant and you can see here rampant nasturtiums i let the nasturtiums self-seed everywhere and then if they start threatening to overtake or they get in the way just pull them out chop them up they make great compost yes you can eat them <laughs> i don't actually like the taste of the flowers or the leaves and they don't fill me up but i do like the seeds as poor woman's capers but if I just show you a shot along here, oh my goodness, look, it is a jungle. The teepee squash that were on the floor, and that's the horizontal squash bed. Oh, so let's just go back that way. And it's also a mass of nasturtiums. Oh, actually, isn't that a beautiful sight? Masses and masses. So this will be my bed my nasturtiums for harvesting the seeds from. Is it going to completely engulf the cold frame? <laughs> we'll see. Right, so, um, where were we? Ah oh, yes, it's brassica day, Vivi, concentrate. It's not squash, it's not nasturtiums. So yeah, get this whipped off, get the pipes uncrossed, raise it all up a bit. You can see, can't you? Look how squished squished bit of weeding a bit more mulch ah now the other thing you know i was saying about cutting the grass and doing my edges of course by doing that i will i'll go around afterwards and pick up all the clippings to put on these beds as mulch because there's nothing else to mulch them with at the moment okay so that was my next job in a minute but in the meantime bed number one top bed Main crop potatoes, they'll be coming out soon. But now, yay, I have two lovely rows of purple sprouting broccoli in watered, netted, but not mulched. Yep, I'm on the scrounge for mulch now. So what I'll do, for example, where some of my chard has gone a bit over and gnarly, I'll have those off, chop them up, there can be uh, a mulch. The crazy rampant courgettes, etc. I've had to move <laughs> a little bit to make this path accessible again in order to get in here my what's in here? Calabrese. And then next door, the Savoys. Now I don't have any of the clear net tunnels left so I've put the shade netting on for now but over the weekend what I'll do is I'll pop back I've got EnviroMesh just the kind of the loose you know what you call it, like the loose flat stuff on a roll like that I will come back at the weekend and fashion some sort of hoopage to put it over for these because they don't need shade also 
these nets aren't quite long enough. So I've got a couple sticking out on either end. I'll think about something else to cover them with. But yeah, oh, chuffed, 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 chuffed today to one bed, two bed, three beds planted up today. And it'll be a fourth bed and the kale back down over my shoulder, fifth bed, tended to, sorted, you know, really looked after, ready for winter. And yeah, like I say, I've got the energy. <laughs> Come back and tackle the grass and create some mulch for myself. Oh, what a relief. What a relief. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's now the next day. <laughs> I was about to start all this yesterday when a friend of mine turned up. I haven't seen her for ages because I've been so AWOL this summer. Uh, and I just really, really wanted to spend some time with her, catch up, all that, just life. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm carrying on with um, getting these brassica beds sorted today, lifting the poles, exactly as I described. These nasturtiums were, well, at that end, they were sort of, they were actually pushing me Cavallo Nero down. So just whip them out, get them chopped up, they can go in the compost. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I was saying yesterday, I've got a ton of nasturtiums down there that I can harvest from. The great thing about nasturtiums, Oh, there are so many great things about them, which is why I let them... Oh, this hedge! <laughs> um, which is why I'm so happy to let them self-seed. One, they look gorgeous. Two, they taste yummy. Different parts, depending on what you like. I like the seeds. Three, they make great ground cover. You know, if you've got any <sighs> bare bits. <laughs> this hedge really needs tackling yeah great ground cover so they're almost acting like a mulch but also what's really great at this time of year although it's a bit early <laughs> to be thinking like this it's it's more of an autumn job is when so much of the plant matter that we're taking out to put in the compost is brown and very much dead it's great to have such green lush stuff to mix into that compost. Yay, fab. So, while the nets are off, I'll also go around just with like these, some of these lower leaves. They've properly been nibbled. Uh, the ones further up are fine. But get off all these damaged ones, get them chopped up, compost as well. And before too long, this compost will be ready, it'll be ready enough to go on to any of the bare beds this winter. So any of the beds that I empty, such as, say, the squash beds, they will, oh, excuse me, they will become empty. There won't be a follow-on crop. Great. All this stuff I'm chopping up today, in another, where are we, end of August, I usually harvest the squash in the middle of October. So in about six weeks time, this will all come out of the compost bins and go onto the soil. However decomposed or not it is. So, yay, it's all good. It's all good, you know. <laughs> loads and loads of jobs to do. But in doing these, whoopla, in doing these little jobs now, I'm also creating material for later on in the year. So I feel like in a way I'm doing two jobs at once. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> I forgot to wear it yesterday, my new garden pinny. Oh, I am so loving it. Nice deep pockets. Got my handkerchief in one of them. If I'm doing some really close work, glasses off into my pocket. I don't know if they might fall out. You know what I could do by way of the glasses? I could make a little glasses pouch, maybe with a popper, like a little lid, a flap on it with a popper and then I could attach it, so maybe on a bit of a ribbon, attach it so that it sits in the pocket, but I can put my glasses inside and press the press dud closed. 
so that even if I'm moving around, if they come out, they're on that little bit of ribbon on the pocket. Oh, I may do that. But yeah, I'm chuffed. It's really, really sturdy, rugged. Um, it's jolly. It's got little, let me come and show you more closely. Little flower pattern. Yay! Adjustable strap, but I'm a tall girl. Oh, actually, no, I could let it out or let it in. But yeah, I'm chuffed. Basically, it was free using that little bit of cash I had on that long since forgotten loyalty card. So yeah, check your loyalty cards. Right, I think there is much to do today. Uh, all part of just rescuing this garden a bit, making sure that I make the most of whatever veggies are here still and gradually getting back on top of the maintenance, so strimming, trimming, weeds, etc, etc. I'm going to have a really, really good crack at it today. Uh, I won't get it finished today, goodness me no, but I have a really, really good crack at it. Oh, oh, just to say as well, while we're here, because I'm next door to the celery, which was looking a little bit wilted this morning, so I thought, well, I'd better chuck a can of water on it. It occurred to me, uh, now, I know we've had a ton of rain through August. We've been dry now for about a week, a week and a little bit. Quite windy, which is quite drying too. But essentially, I haven't watered the garden for, it's now six weeks. Since the middle of July when we had that heat wave and Gary did a couple of waterings for me while I was away. It's not had a drop of water from a watering can for six weeks. It makes me wonder if we reach for the watering cans too soon, too often. But yeah, the celery definitely, they're related to a bog plant. They like having their toes nice and moist. So they've had a good dousing today. Oh, oh, and the other thing. I need to look at my celery seed saving, don't I? Right, that's for another day. We'll look at the seed celery celery seed saving easy for you to say <laughs> another day in the meantime operation tidy up is go yay all right lovelies thank you so much for hanging out with me today and yesterday essentially i'll see you all again really soon i hope in the meantime please look after yourselves and your gardens if you can if you've been poor <laughs> excuse me <coughs> excited if you've been poorly, please be on the mend by now. I do hope so. All right, lovelies. Cheerio.